contribution talk, sorry. Uh, our speaker is Alfonso Jaimes. Nahera and he's going to talk about self healing of structural life. Can you cover a life in Vida <laughs> Thank you very much. Good afternoon. First of all, I want to thank the organizing committee for inviting me here to Quantum Fest here in Simbesta. It is a pleasure to be back home. And um, I will talk to you about self-healing of structured light. This work has been done in collaboration with Jorge Ugalde and Professor Sabino Chavez from Inaoi. When I was a postdoc at Inaoi currently, I'm a postdoc researcher at CSS in Monterrey. Well, self-healing is a well-known property of basal beams. Basal beam is an invariant propagate uh, beam of, of light. And these basal beams have the remarkable property of if they are being obstructed partially after some distance of propagation, the basal beam can self-reconstruct its original profile. That's why this property is called self-healing or self-reconstruction. And uh, for basal beams, it is a well-known fact, but for Lagrange Gaussian beams, it is not necessarily the case. Lagrange Gaussian beams are shape invariant beams that propagate without changing its shape. As we can observe here in this video, this multi-ring structure only scales and becomes wider. They diffract in free space. And recently, it has been shown that even Lagrange Gauss beams possess the self-healing property. There are uh, works attempting to explain uh, self-healing structure beams in the literature, but uh, at least we believe that the main uh, fact that they study or the main focus is the mathematical properties of the structure beams rather than providing an explanation of phenomenon in physical terms. So that's why we are attempting to provide a physical explanation for this phenomenon. For this, let us begin with the propagation of light in a hollow waveguide made of a couple of mirrors. Here we can see a lot of uh, light beams that are being propagated. We know that the guided modes are um, structured light that can be propagated without distortion in a waveguide, but they uh, can propagate only with a discrete number of angles, which are shown in equation one. These guided modes can be, understand, can be understood as the superposition of traveling waves, one that travel upwards, one that travel downwards, each one with these wave vectors, respectively. And in superposition, they form a standing wave that are the well-known guided modes. However, this is not a free space propagation. Here we have the space in which these beams propagate is bounded. So um, we are going to study light being propagated in free space. If we examine the solutions of the Helmholtz equation, cylindrical coordinates, we can arrive to this kind of solution where we have for the radial coordinate a vessel function of the first kind. This term that accounts the orbital angular momentum uh, term and the propagation term. M is an, an integer and kr and kc satisfy this dispersion relation. Here we have the one dimensional profile of the vessel beam and the two-dimensional transverse profile. They are known as non-diffracting beams because if we take the square modulus, that, that is the intensity of these beams, they do not depend on the propagation coordinate. They, they remain the same in every plane of propagation. However, uh, these beams are not square integrable because the Bessel function of the first kind is not. Additionally, this solution that I shown, which is the well-known Bessel functions, 
they do not obey the summer for the radiation condition. This condition states that at, at the boundary, at, for distances very, very large, any radiation wave will behave as an outgoing wave. There, will be, there should be no incoming waves from infinity. So if we use this only uh, solution, we cannot uh, satisfy this boundary condition. So if we take a second linearly independent solution to the best equation, the normal function, we can build this solution, which, do, which, really, which actually satisfies the Sommerfeld radiation condition. Now, this function is normally discarded because it is singular at the origin. So um, it is claimed that this solution does not provide any physical information. If we take the uh, conjugate, the complex conjugate of this solution, we can obtain the an incoming uh, wave and the outgoing wave that satisfies uh, the radiation condition. Therefore, they represent propagating waves, one outgoing wave and then one coming. So if we define the Hankel waves in this way, with the, the, the well-known Hankel functions of the first and the second kind, we can uh, say that in superposition of these waves, in analogy of the traveling waves of the, the wave guide, on superposition of these waves, you can form the best hobby that we all know. If we examine this uh, asymptotical relation, we can observe that Hankel waves behave as uh, incoming and outgoing radio waves. Here we can observe the phases of the Hankel waves, in which we can uh, see that one is an incoming wave and the other one an outgoing. Now, with this we can uh, provide a physical explanation of this phenomenon. What happens here is that the incoming wave that is constituting the vessel beam uh, provides, as a result, a, a shadow that becomes smaller, and the outgoing wave a shadow that becomes larger. Therefore, when the beam, when the, when the part of the beam which is converging actually converges, is when the vessel beam starts its self-reconstruction in free space. Now, Lagarde-Gauss beams can be written in this way. There are solutions to the Bradshaw chemical equation. They, uh, their name is due to the fact that they have an associated Lagarde polynomial and a Gaussian. And as I said before, it is a shape invariant beam. This is its one-dimensional transverse structure and the two-dimensional one. Again, when it propagates, it do not change its shape. But if we take a cut in this plane, we can observe this lateral view or longitudinal view of the propagation or the diffraction of the Gerd Gaussian beams. So each line represents one of the rings that are being propagated. And uh, we can uh, see how they scale and diffract. A mathematical key point that we use to build this formalism is to notice that the associated Lagarde polynomial, along with the Gaussian and this power term, behaves asymptotically for the largest values of n, as precisely the, the Bessel function of first n. But this is uh, actually the, the structure, the transfer structure of the Gerdau's beams. Therefore, if we want to uh, produce traveling waves, we have to take a second linear independent solution of the Lagarde equation that behaves asymptotically for large values of n as the Neumann function. n is the radial number, right? Yeah, n is the radial number, and it is an integral one. As, uh, in the same as m, which is also an integer number. And uh, depending in if n is integer or not, this, this second solution uh, changes a lot. That's why we take this uh, uh, form of, of 
the function which is which resembles the, the, the very definition of the Norman function. And we have uh, proved that for largest values of n, they behave asymptotically as the Neumann function. Therefore, we can uh, define Hankel lagger waves, which are outgoing and incoming waves. That, in this uh, asymptotic limit, they actually behave as the Hankel waves. And this is this, the phase structure of Hankel lagger waves. So, uh, uh, and again, this solution, uh, as in the case of, uh, of uh, vessel functions, is singular at the origin. So in a traditional, uh, in, in a traditional uh, um, work, working traditionally, we will discard this second solution because of the same, of the same reason. Therefore, with these traveling waves, we can provide a qualitative description of what happens in the self-healing phenomenon. But if we want to be more quantitative, we can study the rays, which are the trajectories normal to the wavefront of the hankel lager waves at these points. These points lie at the very edge of the obstruction. So we're going to study how this point propagates as a ray of the outgoing laguerre hankel wave and the incoming. Therefore, the incoming wave or the incoming ray must describe approximately the behavior of the light field. Here we can see that when the wave front converges is when the self-reconstruction phenomenon takes place and this region of the space is where self-reconstruction is not given, only here. It's remarkable to note that this propagation is the propagation of Laguerre downspin. We are not using any second solution to Laguerre equation. The, the only information of the traveling Hankel waves are in this race. This is the lateral view of the propagation of this obstructed Lagarde beam, we can observe this shadow that becomes smaller, the one that becomes yeah. larger, and if we plot the rays, we can observe that the region in which the, the self-healing takes place is precisely the region where the rays mm -hmm. of the Hankel waves are predicting mm -hmm. this phenomenon. So Um, uh, well, yeah, um, we think that this asymptotic behavior tells us something about the very nature of, of uh, vessel beams. But, but of course, uh, this uh, self-healing is more uh, clear when we've got large values of n. But if we take n4, 5, 3, we will see also uh, the behavior. But uh, yeah, of course, it's clear for, for large values of n. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Well, here, instead of points, we can see the propagation of, of this light, uh, of the rays as a, as a continuum. It is very, very near. And if we uh, move the obstruction, from the center of the beam, we can observe the same phenomenon. After the rays converge, is when the region in which self-healing takes place. And from this from this region of the outgoing waves, and, and, and out of, of, of this region is when we have not so much uh, distortion <coughs> of the beam. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Yes, because. The second solution that we are using is the variant at the, at the origin. You can just uh, put the obstruction everywhere, right? Everywhere. You have to cover? Oh, you can put it everywhere? Yeah, everywhere. Okay, okay. 
Yeah, um, and maybe this uh, next slide will be become uh, uh, clear. Um, we um, went to the laboratory and tried to, to, to obtain experimentally this Hankel Lager way. In this case, well, I, I present um, again uh, obstruction uh, which um, uh, obstructs the, the, the origin where the singularity lies, but even uh, we obtain also uh, images for for the uh, Hankelegger uh, waves, but of course we are in, in real world we, we cannot um, model an, an, an infinity a, 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 a singular point. But uh, exper experimentally we've done this with spatial light modulators, so we have to take an hologram of this beam. And of course, at the origin, it, it is a, a, a natural a cutoff of, of the main part of, of the energy. And even taking this uh, cutoff, the, the behavior is, is very well, is, is, is very close to the theoretical one. So uh, if we partially obstruct this, this incoming Lagarde Hankel beam, we observe only one shadow that becomes smaller <coughs> and after some distance the profile of the Lagardian beam is obtained. This uh, formalism can be applied also to other kind of, of structural light beams, for example, and a very uh, quick uh, application can be given to the elegant Lagardons beams, which are very uh, close, at least at, at first sight, with the Lagarde uh, Gauss beams. But uh, the elegance uh, resides in the mathematical fact that this argument is the same as the exponential. In this case, we have not a shape invariant beam, and uh, the energy is more concentrated around the optical axis. If we see the propagation of these beams, this ring-shaped beam, when it reaches the far field zone, it behaves as a donut beam. And it can be shown, it can be proved, that this behavior is uh, the same no matter what kind of uh, parameters we can uh, take for the elegant Lagrange beams, they are always behaving in this way. So if we uh, study the propagation again of the rays of the um, um, very analogous, elegant, traveling Hankel Lagarde waves, we can study the uh, propagation of the rays that are at the waist of the beam. The waist of the beam is the radius in which the main part of the energy of the beam is contained. Therefore, if we analyze this situation, we observe that after some distance of propagation, the incoming rays that lie almost at the edge where the energy of the beam lies has converged. If it converges and continues diverging, as we can see in this video, what happens is that the energy is diverging. So we will obtain this donut beam, but the rays of the, hand, of the elegant Hankel waves describe very good the behavior of the energy. Here, it is the outgoing wave that is at the edge where the, ener where the energy takes place. Therefore, the beam is bounded by this ring. And the inner energy is bounded by this inner ray. And that's all. As final remarks, we have formulated a theory and explanation of self-healing, of uh, the self-healing properties of Laguerre and elegant La uh, Gaussian beams. It confirms our theoretical prediction of the existence of these traveling waves. And maybe we can pose a provocative question. Is, is the theory of Gaussian beams complete? And our theory can be extended to other uh, families of structured beams. And thank you so much.
three quarters of the field. Okay. Not just one circle. Okay, well, um, if you cut the, for example, the half of the beam, uh, you, you can um, study the behavior of, of these rays. And what happens is only in one half, uh, there will be an incoming wave that uh, will need a counterpart to, to provide a self-reconstruction. So if you uh, block a, a very important part of the beam, this uh, convergence will not uh, be uh, necessarily complete. So therefore, we will observe, of course, a, 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 a part of the energy behaving as a, as a converging uh, way and one as an outgoing, but self-healing uh, will be compromised. But it's a very good question. Well, uh, uh, the bar or a cross or a Ah, uh, if, 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 if it is not uh, so large, the obstruction, but is in other kind of shape, not only circular, there will be no problem. Because if we have uh, incoming, incoming waves that are around this uh, obstruction, there will be uh, there will be self reconstruction, self healing, uh, in, in, independently of the diffraction that this obstacle will. will, will will provide. Self-healing uh, uh, beams with self-healing properties are being used in telecommunications, even in propagation uh, between uh, turbulence. And this, of course, these properties is very good for uh, this kind of applications. There is an open line of, of research which uh, has basic research, applied research, and of course, if, if we've got a, a better view of what happens with, with the waves and encountering uh, obstacles, we we have we are in a very uh, potential uh, stage to use these applications. But yeah, of course. Yes, uh, I was wondering uh, if the this effect is restricted so, to some wavelengths, or is it possible to do it with radio waves or stream? Um, in, pri in, in principle, it is not restricted. In principle, we can also. Um, find this kind of phenomena for sound waves, for example. Okay. If we could, if, if we could have a, a way to produce, um, for example, uh, sound waves with orbital angular momentum, which I know there is, uh, uh, th th there is a technology to produce these kind of waves. If you can produce a Lagergal's uh, sound wave, then you must uh, expect this kind of behavior. It is not restricted to to wavelength regimes. Okay, and the second uh, question would be, um, in, as regarding the question of the doctor, how much information or how much a part of the array can you cover before you uh, lose or compromise the self-healing process? Uh, the, uh, the good <coughs> part of this formalism is that this question can be addressed, can be answered by using uh, the race. Because as in we have this in this figure, for example, we can um, know in which region there will be self-healing, in which region there, there, there will there will be no self-reconstruction, and of course, depending on the on the block, is the part of the energy that will be available in, in other <coughs> in other propagation planes. But with this, we can uh, study regions in which self-healing uh, exists and uh, uh, provide uh, a, a quantitative analysis of that. Okay, and uh, sorry for the last one. Yep. Uh, does it have a specific time <coughs> for recovery? Ah, of course, yeah. It is a very good question. 
uh, I forgot to tell that uh, these distances are uh, below the diffraction length. Okay. So uh, we uh, we can obtain uh, self healing um, for distances which are not very large. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. So I, I, I just had the, 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 the optical physicist question. Yeah. Like the textbook idea of self healing is connected with uh, helicoidal transport of energy, right? Yeah. Right. So, and most people, it's been on, on textbook for 20 years, something like that, and they say, okay, whenever you have an helicoidal uh, pointing vector, you will have some sort of self healing, and you can see those in, in uh, vessel beams, and you can see those on. On the airfields, right? Yeah. And and your original point was to point at to the physical uh, argument, right? Yeah. So this is my question. Yeah. How introducing incoming and outgoing in the transversal plane yeah. phases is more physical than discussing an helicoidal transport of energy? Well, maybe it's not more physical. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. But uh, what we can uh, at least. If you study uh, pointing vectors, of course, in, in this kind of, of helicoidal uh, phase structure, you can uh, know that there will be energy that, that, that will be um, traveling, uh, converging. But if you've got uh, these traveling waves, you can uh, obtain, at least for us, a more clear picture of what happens. Because you obtain, OK, these uh, beams are uh, can be um, understood to be uh, composed of, of a couple of traveling waves, and therefore the, the, the picture maybe becomes uh, more clear. Perfect. Uh, yes, there's a. Yeah. What type of pointing vector do you recover from these fields? It's also. Ah, uh, well, in this case, uh, the, the beams that I showed, uh, they have an orbital angular momentum equal to zero. So there, uh, there is there's only no. Uh, there is no orbital angular but it, it it can happen in the same in same footage as with another values of orbital angular momentum. No, but, but even if you calculate the pointing vector for a vessel zero, without any orbital angular momentum, you will find that it's uh, Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Okay. Why there is no explicit time dependence on this Okay, uh, we are uh, considering um, monochromatic uh, waves. So in these uh, vessel beams and Lagarde gauss beams, uh, its uh, time, um, its time dependency is uh, an exponential, uh, complex exponential with time. So uh, time is not uh, a, a relevant fact in this in this phenomenon. So, opposite to glass, I'm going to give you the perspective of someone that doesn't know any optics. Maybe you can clarify what's happening. So, from but from my point of view, you always have the same missing information. Like the, the information that you miss is just that initially it just looks like you're recovering because you recover the center, and then you, you like you feel better because you see that it's a becoming better. But the obstacle is just going to the border, right? It is exactly, this is the perfect picture that shows that. Mm -hmm. And that's what related to what Sarah said, that maybe you recover it in the asymptotic, uh, like when the obstacle goes to infinity or to the border, right? But you, I don't think you ever get more information than what you got initially. It's just that the, <coughs> from the way they propagate the, the, the two waves that form the, uh, the beam, some, they propagate away and they, they and some of them propagate to the rate to the center of mm -hmm. Well, um, uh, uh, first of all, of course, in, in, in these propagation planes, there is a lot of diffraction because we are using, um, uh, uh, we, are, we are blocking with very rigid uh, obstacles. So diffraction enters, as, as we can see here, so uh, therefore, if we make an analytic comparison of this um, profile, it will be now exactly as the Lagarde does. That's why it is an approximate uh, self-reconstruction. Self this is 
this is something that uh, can, cannot be denied. Now, um, uh, yeah, when you uh, when you study these uh, beams uh, in the far field cell, of course you will obtain a, a, a more approximate profile as, as, as if you you've got in, in the beginning. But even in these uh, regions of, of propagation, which are not far field, you can uh, see that these waves describe what you are seeing. Therefore, um, our, our point of view is that we are studying traveling waves that adjust to the well, traveling waves that provides some um, uh, predictive features that can be um, that can be compared theoretically and experimentally. So this is uh, the reason why we think that it is important to you, to study this traveling place. Uh, actually, I, I really love his question because yeah. basically he's telling you why don't you measure the entropy or any entropic thing related to the whole beam? Mm -hmm. Then what you mm -hmm. miss when it, you introduce uh, an obstruction and then how this original entropy of the system, the information of the system, how much you miss, and then the final entropy after a uh, propagation, how this relates. And th that's a very nice question. I have never to seen quantify. that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To quantify, to quantify yeah. the, the entropy, the information, yeah. the propagation point once you, you recover that. And that's a very nice question. Yeah, that's a good question. But this question, we're not trying to, to answer this question. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not the formal that's what, that's No, no, yeah, yeah, of it's course. A very good yeah. Yeah, 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 the forum yeah. do, doesn't try to answer that. There are these two fields the only ones that uh, that heal themselves? So you have like air gauss, the best. What about airy uh, fields or oh, fields? Yeah, uh, or, uh, repulsive oscillator fields. Yeah, the, there is work, uh, for example, in, in airy beams. Uh, you can also use the second solution to IRI to IRI equation. You obstruct IRI, uh, IRI beams, and you can see uh, uh, again one shadow that becomes that, that travels in one direction, and the other in the in the opposite direction. So, uh, with this, we, we we want to 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 answer why why this happens. And if we can provide a, a more um, brief um, uh, answer to, to what happens with, with self-healing uh, beams, but of course, as, as it was said, with the pointing vector, you can uh, provide, of course, some uh, physical explanation. But with these two traveling waves, we think that it's a very brief, uh, a very brief explanation to this phenomenon. Thank you very much. We thank you. Thank you.